Hey, this is Joe from Home Studio Corner. Remember that old game show, Name That Tune? What if I told you that whole philosophy is a really great mixing philosophy? Only instead of saying, I can name that tune in three notes, you say something like, I can mix that vocal in two plugins. Let me show you what I'm talking about. We'll, we'll test this out on a simple spoken word recording. Hey, this is Joe Gilder from Home Studio Corner, and I can mix that vocal in two plugins. If I was mixing this, and I mix my own spoken word a lot, meaning every video that I do, all the podcast episodes I've done in the past, I've done a lot of spoken word mixing. And what I've found over the years, I've tried lots of different approaches. I have found what works best and sounds best is this simple approach where I mix this vocal using two plugins, two processes, EQ and a limiter. Let me show you how that works. First, we'll throw just a simple EQ on here. Uh, a lot of times what I'm going to do is roll off a little bit of low end so there's no surprise boominess down there. So something like maybe this. Hey, this is Joe Gilder from Home Studio Corner, and I can mix that vocal in two plugins. Still has that deep low end kind of radio sound that we want, but it's not overly boomy. And then probably, let's just listen one more time. Hey, this is Joe Gilder from Home Studio Corner. I want a little more clarity in the low mid, so I'm going to go find somewhere around two to 400 hertz and cut that. Hey, this is Joe Gilder from Home Studio Corner, and I can mix that vocal in two plugins. Hey, this is Joe Gilder from Home Studio Corner, and I can mix that vocal in two plugins. And then if I want, I can add a little extra air in the top end. Hey, this is Joe Gilder from Home Studio Corner, and I can mix that vocal in two plugins. Feels pretty good to me. Now, literally, all I need is a limiter to get it up to mastered, acceptable level so it's not super quiet compared to everything else which is the same thing we do when mixing music as well so if i were to grab the limiter from studio one i'll put it on my master and i'm literally just going to bring up the volume at k14 until the vocal is sitting at or around that zero mark there hey this is joe gilder from home studio corner and i can mix that vocal in two plugins Hey, this is Joe Gilder from Home Studio Corner, and I can mix that vocal in two plugins. And there you go. I'm done. This is literally the signal chain that I've used for over 200 episodes of my own podcast, which is on break right now. So you can go look for it. Lots of old episodes there. Um, it's the same exact process that you're hearing on my vocal right now. I've got it running through a simple mixer on this a simple uh, EQ on this mixer, and it's going into the computer, and it's hitting a limiter, and then hitting your ears. That's it. I don't go back and remix. I don't add a bunch of extra stuff. Now, a lot of people would take this vocal and would say, okay, well, I need a gate because I want it to turn down anything when I'm not speaking so it's nice and quiet. I need a compressor because, of course, you have to use a compressor in addition to the limiter. Uh, probably need a de -esser after that compressor to take care of the, the S's and the sibilants that the compressor, ironically, is causing to be accentuated, and so on and so forth. And I'm not saying that those tools aren't useful and there might be situations where you need them, but if you are adding things by default because you just think you need to versus you heard a problem that this specific tool is going to solve, I think you're wasting time and arguably hurting the sound. This, to me, needed these two things. The limiter is just a given because we have to get things up to a mastered level. The EQ... It needed it just a little bit to clean up the sound. And that's it. A lot of other people put lots of other stuff. I've seen lots of presets um, in systems where it's meant for podcasters, and then there's presets that have all of the processing on there. There's all the things I mentioned before, and there's a gate, and there's things like that. I would argue those things typically aren't necessary unless there's a big problem you're trying to solve. So next time you mix, even if it's a spoken word or a full song, see how few plugins you can use to mix that song. It's not going to be right for every style of music. It's not going to be right for every mix or every track. But I think you'll find, especially if you've got this sneaky suspicion, like as I'm talking, you kind of the back of your head are thinking, yeah, I think I use too many plugins. Maybe that's you. Maybe take kind of a clean sweep and try to use as few as possible and see what happens. I think what you'll find is your mixes become a lot more alive and they feel a lot more real, a lot more raw in a good way. And they don't sound overly processed. One of the biggest mistakes people make when they're learning how to mix is they do too much. They watch a video from me where I do this cool trick and then they do that cool trick every single time. Or they add all the plugins to all the channels because that just looks like what the people on YouTube do. Whereas doing something like this forces you to listen more. If I say I'm only going to use one plugin on this track, 
I got to listen a lot more closely because I know I'm not going to have another plugin come in and rescue me later. Whether you end up only using the one plugin or you do end up with four or five plugins on the track or more, if you take this approach to it, you're going to end up with a better sound because each plugin, you try to make it sound as good as possible. And then if that's not happening and you do need another tool, great, bring that tool in, but only if you need it. I've mixed hundreds and probably thousands of my own vocal, both singing and spoken word. And I've come, I've come to the conclusion that this is one of the best sounds on my vocal. So take that for what it's worth. Apply this to your next project. Come back here, leave a comment, let us know how it works. By the way, if you don't have a process for how you approach mixing, you've probably seen me talk about this before, but if you haven't taken the time to get your copy, it'll take you about 60 seconds, eh, 30 seconds. Go to 5stepmix.com, enter your email address. I will send you a free copy of my 5-Step Mix Guide to your inbox. You can read it in one sitting, and it'll help you start to formulate your own mixing process to get mixes done in a more orderly fashion so you can mix more songs and get better mixes. All right, thanks so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.